picture this, that important presentation you're all ready for. Your boss is sitting, waiting to hear what you've got to say. And you've got your new silk blouse on, you've got a lovely jacket, you're new in your job, and you're about to walk into the room. And then suddenly you are hot. Not just a bit hot, but a hot burning that's rising up from your tummy. Your hair, which you'd washed and dried this morning, ready to do this presentation at work, is now damp around the edges. And you can feel a trickle of sweat running down your back. You think, oh, I'll take off my jacket. That will cool me down. And then you think, oh, no, I've got this silk blouse on and I'm going to have a huge ring of sweat under each arm. And the presentation you've been rehearsing for to get ready to do, everything's gone out of your head. This is what we're up against when we are struggling with hot flushes in the workplace or wherever else you may be. So in the written blog below, I have answered most of the frequent questions that people ask me about hot flushes and night sweats so that you can make some changes to what's going on, because you may not even have known about them, some changes to what's going on in your life hopefully to improve the situation. But before I need to go, but go on, I just want to say in English speaking countries or certainly here in England, we use the word hot flush, but in other countries that speak English, they often use the word hot flash. They're exactly the same thing. So let's start off with the first question because people often ask me this, what does a hot flash actually feel like? I think it's, it's safe to say it's different from each person, but it's a sudden feeling of sensation of that spreads throughout your body often starting in your chest or face but some people say it starts in their tummy this intense heat spreads throughout all over your body down your back and everywhere your skin becomes flushed and red and often really blotchy I mean like really difficult to hide um, and really quite embarrassing and then you get this sweating you're sweating often in large amounts in your head your face your neck down your back at the same time as this, your heart rate often goes up, giving you this sort of slightly panicky or anxiety feeling. Um, and then once you've sweated, then you start getting cold. So not first you start getting hot and then suddenly you get the real chills. And everybody displays slightly different symptoms. Funnily enough, when I first started getting them, it tended to be in the early evenings around seven o'clock when I was about to teach a fitness class. Now, if I'm teaching a fitness class, I've always got some food on board. So I wasn't hungry, but I used to suddenly get this awful craving, like I was about to have a sort of an almost a hypo. And actually I realized that I was hot, anxious, flushed, and my heart rate was up and that's what it was. So I missed it at the first two. How long do they last? Well, I would say from a few seconds up to a couple of minutes. Some people would say that their hot flushes last for five minutes, um, but for some people it's over and done with quickly. And why do we get them? Well, the exact mechanism isn't really known, but basically when your estrogen levels goes da go down, the thermoregulation in your brain, your brain's ability to um, balance temperature goes all out of whack. So you become increasingly sensitive to tiny, tiny uh, changes in temperature, a tiny notch on the radiator or a window open or whatever. But it also means we become um, sensitive to spicy foods as well. And stress can affect us and as can alcohol. So it's this, in this fluctuation in hormones that leads to a real sensitivity. Why might those hot flushes suddenly start increasing? It may be that you've got two or three a week, you're bumbling along quite happily. That one lady said that to me. And then suddenly her hot flushes went, it went through the roof. And in fact, when I spoke to her, it turned out that she had an awful lot going on. There was a lot going on at home and her stress levels had gone through the roof. So when you are extra stressed, the hormones that you've got left are working really hard and you're producing cortisol because you're so anxious. And that means you're even more likely to have more of these hot flushes. Of course, you might reach for a glass of wine in the evening because you're so stressed. That makes it work worse. And really sadly, those of us who used to love going away on really hot holidays and lying on a beach, the temperature of a hot holiday, the humidity, all of those things can cause more hot flushes than normal as well. And some medications, some antidepressants um, and blood pressure medications can also cause hot flushes. I recommend that people keep a diary, a hot flush diary, so that they can write down what their triggers are if you notice something's happening.
So why do some of your favorite foods and drinks trigger hot flushes? It's really sad, isn't it? I used to love a glass of wine at the weekends, two or three glasses of wine as a special treat. And now if I have one, it really affects my sleep because I wake up having a hot flush. So there are some foods and drinks that are associated with making it worse. And you have to work out what your tolerance level is. So um, the, the, the spice that's in chili or really hot, um, yeah, chilies basically. So in hot spicy foods can have an effect because um, it increases your blood flow to the skin. So it may be all those spicy things that you love so much are out. As I mentioned, alcohol, that has a negative effect on us. Interestingly, Though many women, myself included, say that um, a spirit, so for me it's a gin and tonic, doesn't have such a bad effect on them for hot flush reasons as a glass of wine does. Caffeine is a stimulant that um, can often trigger hot flushes and so can really high levels of sugar as well. So difference between a hot flush and a night sweat? Well, not really very much. Some people say I've never had a hot flush but actually I wake up in the night. So it's all to do with the thermoregulation again, but when you wake up in the night, um, it's because of that hormone um, fluctuation and it can be a tiny change if you move the duvet and you suddenly get cold, your body thinks quick, warmer up. Um, of course, they have an awful effect on our sleep which then has a knock-on effect on the amount of energy you've got. You reach for the sugary foods, you reach for the caffeine, and so it becomes a spiral. So how can you reduce your hot flushes? You know what, I will talk about HRT, but in a bit. There are loads of companies now selling menopause clothing. So I would say that basically you stop wearing the woolly pullies or the big coats and all of those scarves. And you go, in fact, to layers that you can easily put on and take off in a work situation. Test the sweat marks. If you know that something is likely to trigger a hot flush for you, test your clothing um, and see if it's sweat proof. Um, I would also say, thinking about uh, changes you can make to keep you cool in the workplace. Can you have a fan on or near your desk at work? Can you have air conditioning on? Can you find a way to be able to get cool quite quickly? Um, the Spanish, don't they? They have those beautiful fans that they have around in their handbag. You know what? They are beautiful. They're cheap and cheerful and they work really well. But cold compresses, cool showers and baths in a situation that you can do that work really well. I think stress management is really important. So we can't alleviate stress. Anybody in the perimenopause and beyond is going to have some level of stress. We can't stop that. So finding ways to alleviate the effects of the stress. So whether it's walking, singing, yoga, Pilates, anything that makes you um, feel something different. I'm a great advocate of exercise. If you know me, you'll know that. So particularly strength exercise has been um, proven to help um, alleviate moderate hot flushes. Um, avoid your triggers. Once you know what your food triggers are, then obviously um, that's a really good idea. You can avoid them. And then there are medications. As I say, I'm going to come on to HRT in a second, but there are other medications, certain antidepressants, um, which may help. So coping with them at work, I guess it's just important to come back to the beginning. Uh, as I said, thinking about your clothing. But I'm a huge advocate of workplaces having an awareness of how the menopause and perimenopause affects us women in the workplace. So is there something you can do to change a uniform or the way you dress? I mean, clearly that's up to you. I know that when I was nursing and working in intensive care, we changed our uniforms and I was young then. So they were much looser because it was really, really hot. It must have been awful for my colleagues at that time to have had a hot flush in the uniforms we were wearing. Maybe you can ask for a fan to be given to you in the workplace. You can certainly think about drinking more water. Make sure that you don't get dehydrated. Don't work through your lunch break. Don't be a lunch break hero. Get up, get out, step outside, get some fresh air if you can and make sure that you keep your blood sugar up and it doesn't dip down. Relaxation techniques. Now, there's very little you can probably do while you're at work, but a simple thing of going over to a window, looking out ideally into a green space and taking two or three minutes just to slow down your breathing can be really, really helpful. 
But in the end, I would encourage you to talk to a supervisor, a line manager, the HR department at your work, anybody who you can engage in. This is what I'm going through. You know, what support could we potentially put in place and how then they might be able to help you support other people in the workplace as well, if appropriate. And then finally, I just wanted to talk about HRT. So since Davina McCall's TV programme on the menopause a few years ago, women have been clamouring to get their hands on HRT. And I'm on HRT. Don't get me wrong, it has been fabulously helpful. But I do believe it's not a sticking plaster and that either before or alongside embarking on an HRT regime, it's really important to think about your sleep, your rest, your movement, your exercise and all of those things as well. Um, people often say, how quickly does it work? Well, I would say in most cases, between 12 to 48, 24 to 48 hours, you would notice a difference, particularly to the night sweats and the hot flushes. So hormone replacement therapy basically puts back in the estrogen that's starting to decline. There are various ways that you have it or can have it. You can have it with patches or gels or sprays. I would really recommend that you do a little bit of research and work out what system of application might work best for you in your in your working life so for instance if you're a swimming teacher you might not want a patch on all the time because you might think it's going to come off if you're in water all day that sort of thing so your GP or your healthcare provider will be able to help you work that out and of course if you'd like to talk to me about all of this stuff for an hour I offer a thing called an empower hour which us enables us to be really specific about all the areas of your life and, and, and look at your food and your stress. We spend a full hour together coming up with a plan that you can put into place immediately. If that's of interest, click the button. But otherwise, I hope that's been helpful. Please subscribe to my videos if you find yourself on YouTube and leave a comment if you'd like to. See you soon. Bye bye.